In this video I want to talk about how the memory on the microcontroller works. This is an important topic because the memory on the microcontroller is limited and if we are not careful about how we write our code we can easily end up uh, running out of this memory before we have finished uh, with our program. And I want to talk about which types of memory a microcontroller has as well as uh, show a code example to exemplify how different parts of our code ends up in uh, different locations uh, inside the memory of the microcontroller. I also want to show some programs you can use to uh, analyze the amount of space your or memory space your code takes up as well as uh, what part of your code takes up the most amount of space, like the symbols that takes up the most amount of space, which can be very useful to know how to do when you want to track down the worst offenders in case you need to reduce the amount of flash memory you use. And I'm going to use this microcontroller as an example because that's the microcontroller I have on this robot because this video is part of a larger video series where I'm programming this robot from scratch. But what I'm going to say here really applies to any microcontroller because most microcontrollers work the same way. But note, I am going to keep the discussion around microcontrollers and I'm not going to talk about other devices that have an operating system running on them and that has a memory management unit because then memory works a bit differently. There are of course some similarities but there are also some distinct differences uh, that I'm not getting into in this video. Okay, so to begin with, on a microcontroller, you're going to have two types of memory. You're going to have flash and RAM. Well, some microcontrollers also have a third type of memory called EEPROM, which is usually a smaller type of memory used for storing configuration data. Uh, but I'm not going to talk about that here because what you're mostly going to be interested in is going to be the flash and the RAM. And technically, Flash is a kind of EEPROM, uh, but anyway, Flash and RAM works differently. The Flash memory is non-volatile, while the RAM is volatile. And what this means is that uh, whatever you store on the Flash memory is going to stay there even if you power off the microcontroller or the memory, while whatever you store on the RAM is going to be lost when you power it off. They are also used for different purposes. Uh, your, the flash is going to be used to store your program uh, code, like the instructions that your CPU is executing. And the RAM is going to be used for your program variables, your program data. And what's inside the flash is pretty much going to remain the same throughout the execution of your program. And what's inside your RAM is going to change throughout the execution of the program, depending on which function you are currently in and what's stored inside and what's stored inside your variables and so on. And on most microcontrollers, the flash memory is going to be much larger than the RAM. For example, on the microcontroller I'm using, I have 16 kilobytes of uh, flash, but only 512 bytes of uh, RAM. And this is going to be the case on most microcontrollers because for most applications you're going to need more uh, flash memory compared to RAM. Okay, so that's the two types of physical memory inside the microcontroller. And now before I get to the code example, I want to first explain the process of going from source code all the way to machine code stored inside the memory. because. Having a basic understanding of that is going to be important to better understand the code example that I'm going to show you. Okay, so the way that process looks is that to begin with, you're going to have written a bunch of uh, code. Uh, so let's just use C as an example now because that's what I'm using in this series. So you're going to have a bunch of C files. And the first thing you're going to do uh, on your path to getting this C code into your microcontroller is going to be to run your compiler to compile this code into machine code. And what the compiler is going to do, it's going to translate the source code into machine code. And the compiler is also going to divide this machine code into different sections. Exactly how these sections look and how the compiler divides the code into different sections is going to depend on the particular uh, compiler and what object format it's using. Uh, but the common object format used by many compilers is the object format called uh, ELF, uh, Executable and Linkable Format. 
And that's also the one that my compiler is using, the one that I'm using for this project. And for example, this format stores the program code into a section called text and the data into different sections called BSS, uh, read-only data uh, and data uh, and, and so on. But I'm going to show examples of those uh, sections in, the, in my code example. But when the compiler is done, uh, we're still not ready to put the like the machine code into our microcontroller because we haven't actually specified where inside the memory the machine code should end up. And that's going to be like that's going to be the main job of the linker, which is the next step of this chain. So what the linker does is that it's going to take a linker script and the linker script uh, describes the memory layout of uh, the microcontroller. So it contains information about uh, where the flash memory starts at what start address and how big it is and the same information for the RAM where the RAM starts and how big it is. The linker script also explains where the sections of the object files should end up inside the memory and the linker takes this linker script together with the object files and turns everything into a single final executable file. The flash programmer then takes the machine code of this uh, executable file and writes it to the flash memory. But it doesn't touch the RAM because the RAM is not touched until we reset the microcontroller and the CPU starts executing instructions. Because the first thing that the CPU does when uh, the microcontroller boots up is uh, like before the main function is that it's going to run a piece of code called uh, or usually referred to as the startup code and among other things uh, the startup code or a big part of the startup code is to initialize the RAM so it's going to if we have any variables uh, like uh, any global variables initialized with some values it's going to set up that inside the RAM and also zero initialize any global variables that are not uh, initialized. And it's also going to set the stack pointer to initialize our stack, which is the section of memory used for storing the context of uh, a function. Uh, I will talk more about this in the code example. Of course, this is a very simplified explanation of how uh, all of this works, but I think it's enough details to understand the example that I'm going to show you now. So what I have here is the standard Blink example for my microcontroller. And I'm going to add some variables to this program and show where they end up inside the memory. I usually like to do things from the command line, but when it comes to things like this, when I want to inspect the memory and uh, sh look at this assembly view or step through the code, then I like to do things from the IDE. And CC Studio has something called Memory Browser, which allows you to look at the content of the entire memory, which is going to be very useful to demonstrate how things work in this video. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is add a few variables to this example and I'm going to tell you where these are going to end up inside the memory and then I'm going to show you that they actually end up where I say they are going to end up. And I need to be thoughtful about how I define this variable and use them inside my code because the compiler is pretty good at optimizing things like this. And when the compiler does optimizations, things don't always end up where you expect them to end up. So for example, for this first variable here, I'm making it an array because, well, arrays are going to be easier to spot inside the memory. Uh, and I'm also giving it different values for each index because if I give it the same values, the compiler might optimize it. Of course, normally you want the compiler to do the optimizations, but in this case, when I'm used doing this for demonstration purposes. I don't want the compiler to do any optimizations here. Okay, so the variable I've defined here is a global variable and it's initialized and this means that it's going to end up inside the data section but it's also going to end up inside the const section because this data, the data it's initialized with, has to be stored somewhere when the microcontroller boots up and when the RAM is empty. Because as I said before, when the microcontroller boots up, there's going to be a piece of start of code inside the uh, flash memory that's going to run before our main function. And this startup code is going to initialize a global variable like this. And for it to be able to initialize this variable, it has to know what values it's going to initialize it with. So those values has to be stored inside the flash. So global variables uh, like this are going to count against both the flash and the RAM. And then I'm going to create a second variable, a constant variable. And I'm filling this with identical values because the compiler doesn't optimize this. And as you can see, these values are also 16-bit since the integers on the MSP430, the microcontroller I'm using here, 
is a 16-bit microcontroller, so the integers are 16-bit wide. And since this is a constant variable, it's just going to end up inside the const section. And constant variables don't have to be stored inside the RAM because they are never going to change throughout the execution of the program. So they are simply just going to be stored inside the flash. And then a third variable. This variable I'm going to leave uninitialized. And what the compiler does, or what the C compiler does for uninitialized variables that are global, it's going to initialize those variables with zero. So writing it like this is the same as assigning all values to zero. And variables like this end, ends up in a section called BSS. And the reason for why the compiler puts uh, uninitialized variables like this inside a separate section is that if all of the variables that are going to be zero and initialized are next to each other, the only thing the compiler needs to know, or the only thing the startup code needs to know to initialize that part of the memory is going to be to know the start address of the BSS section as well as how long it is and then it can simply just initialize this entire section to zero and while the values inside the BSS sections are initialized to zero just as the first variable they can be modified throughout the execution of the program which means that the BSS section has to be located inside the RAM the fourth variable I'm going to add inside the main function and since this variable is inside a function and I'm defining it like this it's going to act as a local variable and local variables are allocated different uh, from how global variables are allocated. And local variables inside functions are going to get allocated when we enter the function. And they are going to be allocated on the stack. So when we enter a function, the stack pointer is going to be moved to make place for the local variables inside the function. And it's going to be initialized when the CPU reaches the line of code where it's uh, defined. But it's not just going to be allocated on the stack, because just as with the first variable, uh, the data it's initialized with has to also be stored somewhere. And just as with the first variable, that data is going to be stored inside the flash, inside the const section. And technically, it's also going to be stored inside the text section of the flash, because, well, we're going to need instructions to copy the values from the const section to the stack section when this variable is initialized. And then I'm going to create a static variable inside this function. And I'm assigning this with some random values here because when I tried this before, the compiler was really good at optimizing this uh, variable. And static variables like this work very similar to how global variables, uh, like the first variable works in terms of uh, how it's allocated. So it's going to end up inside the data section and uh, the values it's initialized with is going to end up inside the const section. So it's going to count towards the RAM and the flash. And then I just need to make sure that I use all of these variables so that the compiler doesn't optimize them away. So I'm just going to create a for loop here where I sum all of the values in these arrays into a single int variable. And this line with the for loop is going to end up inside the program code because it's going to translate to CPU instructions stored inside the flash, inside the text section. As for the sum variable, it's going to end up inside the stack because it's a local initialized variable. Uh, but well, you'll, you're going to see that it actually doesn't end up inside the stack because the compiler is going to do an optimization, which I'm going to show you soon. And this line where I'm adding all the values are going to translate into CPU instructions. Uh, so program code stored inside the text section. So that's going to be allocated inside the flash memory. And then I need to make sure that I also use the sum variable. So I'm just going to add it into this for loop uh, below here. Okay, so now I have all of these test variables. So now I'm going to compile and run this code and show you how the memory really looks. Uh, but before I do, I want to first show the linker script here, like uh, the script that tells the linker how the memory layout of the microcontroller looks and where each section should end up inside the, the RAM and flash. So first it specifies the memory layout. And as you can see, the flash starts at address uh, 0, C, 0, 0, 0, 0, and the length is uh, this. And I can open Python here to just to see what this value translates to, or what this hex value translates to in decimal. So just to make sure that it is uh, 16 kilobytes, as I said before, uh, and it is. And then there is the RAM, and this starts at uh, 200, or address 200, and is 200 in length as well and that's 512 bytes. And then I can scroll down and look at the different sections. So here the linker script specify where each section should end up. So here we have all of the sections that I've talked about before. We have the BSS section is going to end up in the RAM. Data section is going to end up in the RAM. And uh, here's also a sysmem. Uh, I haven't talked about this because this section is used for dynamic memory allocation. So if you use cards like malloc or free, 
which I'm not going to use inside my code. So this section, so I'm not going to use this section. So I'm not going to talk about it here either. And usually, you try to avoid dy dynamic memory allocation inside microcontrollers. And then there is the stack section, which is going to end up inside RAM, and the text section, which is going to contain the program code, and that's going to end up inside the flash. And finally, the cons section, which is also going to end up inside the flash. So then I can go on and build and run the code. And the IDE actually writes out how much flash and RAM uh, the code uses. But note the value it's giving for the RAM here is just counting the data stored inside the BSS and data section, like the static sections that it knows up from. And it doesn't count how much is allocated inside like the stack section or the sysmem section, uh, because that's going to vary depending on which function you are in. And this is generally going to be the case. It's going to be much easier to predict how much flash memory you're going to use compared to RAM memory, because if you want to find out how much RAM you're going to use, you either have to like go through all of the code paths and do really tedious calculations or run your program and profile how much RAM is used. So just be aware of that when you try to analyze how much memory your code occupies. So with the code compiled and running on my target, what I would like to do now is open up the memory browser, the, brow the view that's going to let me inspect what's stored inside the memory, both the flash memory and the RAM memory. So the first variable A, I expected that to end up inside the data section and the cont section. And I can look inside the memory browser to see that it actually ended up where I expected it to end up. But to confirm this, I need to know where the different sections actually ended up and I can find out this by looking inside the map file and this is a file that the linker produces after it links all of the files and produces the final executable and the map file is put inside the debug folder next to the final executable so if I open the map file I can see where the different sections ended up and like at what address they ended up and how big they are so looking at the data section I can see that it starts at address 200 and if I look inside my memory browser again, I can see that at address 200, I have the variable A, the first variable. So its values are stored inside the data section as expected. And note, as for the execution, I'm still at the beginning of the main function. And this also proves that the uh, data variables are initialized before the main function inside the startup code. So we have confirmed that it's part of the data section, uh, the RAM. Let's now also confirm that it's part of the cons section, that the variables or, or that the values it's initialized with is stored inside the cons section. Looking at the map file again, I can see that the cons section starts at this address. So if I search for this inside the memory browser, we should expect to see these values there as well. And looking inside the cons section, I can see that the values are there. A, 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 B, 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 C, 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 D, 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 E, E, E. So these values are part of the cons section, which is part of the flash memory. And the startup code uses these values to initialize the variable inside the data section, part of the RAM. So the first variable is allocated as expected. It counts towards the flash and the RAM. So moving on to the next variable. This is a constant variable, and I only expect this to be part of the const section. And looking inside the memory browser again, where the const section is, I can immediately see the B variable here. And since it's only part of the cons section, it's only going to count against the flash. For the third variable, which is a global variable that is not initialized, I expected that to be inside the BSS section, so only part of the RAM. And I can look at what address this is stored by hovering the value inside the ID. And if I search for this in the memory browser, I can see that it's stored here, so it's all initialized to zero. And I can double check that this is the BSS section by looking inside the map file. And it is, because the BSS section starts at 214. And once again, given that I am at the beginning of the main function, we can yet again confirm that this was initialized to zero as part of the startup code. My prediction seems to be pretty good so far. Then we can move on to the variables inside the main function. Well, first we can take a look at the main function itself. It has address C000, and if I search for this in the memory browser, I can see that the main function is here, so the instructions of the main function is stored at this address. And looking inside the map file, this is the beginning of the text section. So the program code is stored inside the text section as expected. As for this variable, uh, which is a local initialized variable, I expected that to be part of the stack. And I can once again look inside the map file to see where the stack is supposed to be located. And it's located at this address. So if I search for this in the memory browser, this is where the stack is located. So I expect to see the stack filled with these values. Or actually, it's not going to be filled with these values yet, because we haven't actually gotten to this point in the execution yet. But before I step through the code, I can first confirm that these values are also part of the constant section. 
So the constant section is at C232 and if I search for that I can see that these DDD are stored here. So those are part of the constant section as well as expected. So they count towards the flash and not only the stack. And then if I go back to the stack and step through the code, I can see that the stack is filled with these values. So the variable is part of the stack inside the RAM, but the values it's initialized with is also stored inside the flash memory, inside the const section. As for the next variable, the static variable, it's initialized before the main function runs, so that's initialized by the startup code, and it has uh, this address, so it's stored right here, next to the a variable, so it's part of the data section, part of the RAM. And just looking inside the map file again, we can just remind ourselves that the data section starts at address 200. And similar to the other variables, the values it's initialized with is going to be stored inside the const section, part of the flash memory. And I can again confirm this by looking inside the memory browser. And once again, the startup code initializes this variable by copying the values from the const section inside the flash memory to the data section of the RAM. As for the sum variable, uh, let's just first step to it. If I step over it, I should expect to see a value here somewhere in the stack be set to zero. Well, it's actually not because the compiler has done optimization here. Uh, because we can see here up in the variable section that the sum variable is actually stored inside the register and it's not part of the stack. The volatile i variable here, on the other hand, that's stored inside the stack because if I iterate through the for loop here, I can see that the value increases here, 1, 2, 3, and so on. Uh, then I also want to point out this section here, uh, the section between the stack and uh, the data and BSS section. This, uh, all of these values here are pretty much random values that the RAM has when the microcontroller boots up. It's uh, memory that's free to use, and if uh, we, for example, grow the stack, like uh, enter a function that has a lot of variables, that's going to grow into this section here. And if we grow the stack too much, the stack is actually going to hit the VSS and data section. And that's when you run into a stack overflow. Then I would like to try one thing here, uh, like the sum variable ended up inside the register as we saw. But if I tell the compiler that this is a volatile uh, variable, meaning that this variable can be changed outside the scope of this function, I think the compiler is going to up optimize it differently and it should end up inside the stack. So if I add volatile here and then run the code again. And one thing that I also want to just show here, uh, now that I am at the beginning of the main function again, is that this variable here, the stack static variable, uh, now that I am at the beginning of the main function, I can see that it's already initialized. So that is initialized by, this, by the startup code. I didn't actually show this before because I talked about this variable after I had stepped over it. And the startup code is part of the flash. And I can I actually see this inside the map file because the startup code is part of this section called C init. This part here is the part initializing the data section. So the A and E variable. And this part here is the code that initializes the BSS section, so this section. And looking inside the linker script again, I can see that we tell the linker here to put the C init section inside the flash memory. So the startup code is part of the flash memory and it runs before the main function. And another thing we can look at here is the PC register, the register that holds the address to the current uh, instruction the CPU is executing. So if I search for this uh, address inside the memory browser, I can see that this instruction is located uh, inside the main function. And I can also open the disassembly view to see which exact instruction we're currently executing. So it's this instruction. And I can look inside the memory browser and see that this instruction is stored here. And this shows that the uh, CPU is executing instructions from the text section, which is inside the uh, flash memory. And while at it, I can also look at the SP register. It holds this value. And if I search for this in the memory browser, I can see that that's where the stack is, as expected. Inspecting the registers and the memory browser like this inside the IDE is indeed a very powerful way to better understand how a microcontroller works. And if I step through the code now, I can see that this sum variable is part of the stack. It's right here. So it's no longer stored inside the register, it's stored inside the stack. And if I keep on iterating through the for loop, I can see that it changes its value.
So both the sum variable and i variable are now part of the stack. Now that we have a pretty good understanding of how different variables are allocated inside the memory, I would just like to give a few examples uh, of code or code snippets that increases the flash space unexpectedly. So first I'm going to do an example here where I multiply two uh, float values. So float multiplication. And I'm just going to add them in the while condition here as an example, it doesn't really matter. So right now the flash usage is at the 666, six, six, uh, number of the beast. And if I compile and run this, I can see that the flash memory has increased to almost a thousand bytes. So just adding this float multiplication increased the flash usage by over 300 bytes. That's a bit unexpected, right? Because I've just added two float uh, variables and I am multiplying them. We don't expect that to take up over 300 bytes. The reason for this increase in size is that the microcontroller I'm running here, or the microcontroller I'm using here, the MSP430, or the version of this MSP430, it doesn't have any dedicated hardware for doing float multiplication. There is no floating point unit. And this means that to be able to do float multiplication on this microcontroller, it has to be done entirely on the CPU. So when the compiler has to translate this float multiplication into machine code, it's going to have to drag in a lot of code to be able to do this on the CPU. And that's why the flash usage increases so much. And it's not just a question about size. Since it's going to take so many instructions, it's also going to be slow. So on a microcontroller like this that doesn't have any dedicated hardware for float multiplication, you're probably going to just want to avoid using floats at all. Something similar also happens when the modulo operator is used as well as when the division operator is used. There is no good support for these operators inside the hardware, so the compiler is going to have to drag in a lot of uh, code to be able to do these operations on the CPU. So these are also operators you are going to want to avoid uh, on a microcontroller like this most of the time. And I'm going to show one last example here where the flash usage increased by a surprising amount. So I switched over to another project here. It's still the Blinky example, but I'm using a different compiler, the GCC compiler, because the TI compiler doesn't even allow me to do this. So what I'm going to do now is to, I'm going to include stdio so that I can use the printf function. You know, the function that's used to print things to uh, like a console. And I just want to show how this function increases the flash usage. Okay, so you can see here that it has increased the flash usage by several thousands of bytes. And the reason for why adding a printf statement like this takes up so many bytes is that there is a lot of code inside the printf function to handle all of the formatting options. And this is also why in a later video when I implement the UART driver or the functionality to trace to a terminal, that I'm going to use another printf implementation, a more stripped down printf implementation to avoid wasting this much uh, flash. And this just goes to show that you have to be a bit careful about uh, what you include inside your code as to not run out of the flash uh, memory. The last thing I want to show in this video are the tools I use to analyze the amount of uh, flash memory my code occupies. And I'm going to do this from my normal workflow, so from the command line. And I'm going to add some new rules to my make file while I'm at it. So I'm first going to create a new local git branch. The tools I'm going to use are part of my uh, compiler toolchain. That is the GC toolchain for my microcontroller. Uh, but the tools I'm using, you'll probably find something similar if you're using another toolchain, because these are tools that can be found in most toolchains. So the first program I'm going to add is the ELF size program. And I'm adding this as a new rule at the bottom of my make file. So I'm just running this command on the final executable. So here I get like a similar output to what we saw in the console inside the IDE before. So this command outputs the text size and uh, the size of the data section as well as the size of the BSS section. So text is going to be part of the flash memory and, uh, and BSS is going to be part of the RAM and data is going to be part of both the RAM and the flash. So, the, so this command is just a quick way to get a sense of how much uh, flash memory my code is using. And I tend to run this command quite often when I write code, just to get a sense of how much space my code is taking. And if I, for example, build a test function here and I start like the test blink LED function, the amount of memory uh, increases. Note the size that this command outputs, it's, it's not going to be the same as the size of the final executable, because the final executable is not just uh, storing or containing the 
machine code that's going to be flashed to the flash memory it's also going to contain other information as well such as debug symbols and so on so if i just look at the size of the test blink led executable i can see that that's much larger compared to how much flash memory is going to be occupied and just to give an example of how the flash memory can be affected, I can remove the compiler flag I added in a previous video, a compiler flag that makes my enums a single byte instead of two bytes. And I can run my size command to see that this uh, flag actually has an effect. So if I remove it from the make file, and then also comment out the static assert I have inside the IO file, Without this flag, the code takes up another 100 bytes. So just by having this flag, I save 100 bytes from my flash. So let's put the flag back. The, another thing I can do is to remove the inline keyword from my inline function inside the io.c file. Oh, so removing this actually decreases the amount of flash space used. I did not expect that to be the case. Because the last time I tried this with these functions, I concluded that making them inline actually took less space. Of course, not inlining them may take more CPU cycles in the end, but in this case that's going to be insignificant. So I think I'm actually going to remove the inlines from these functions now. Because I want to prioritize the amount of flash space here rather than like the execution speed. Okay, so if I just leave the middle functions as inline, I get the least amount of flash space used. So I guess I will just leave it like this now then. I can also change the compiler optimization to see what kind of difference that makes to the size. So if I optimize for size instead, it actually decreases the size by uh, around 100 bytes. But I want the debug symbols during development, so I'm just going to so I'm just going to change this back. And then I just want to try to uh, call printf once more here and just to see how that affects the uh, size again uh, yes and as we saw earlier this has a huge impact on the amount of flash space used because the printf function is a very like it's a quite complicated function including a lot of handling for different formatting options then i want to add another uh, tool to my make file this time a tool called read elf and this is going to allow me to inspect the uh, final executable and look at the, the symbols and how much space individual symbols takes up inside the flash memory. And so this is going to give a more detailed view of how much space individual functions are taking up. And I sort this by the amount of space they take up uh, to, to more quickly give me an overview of the symbols that takes up the most amount of space. So if I run this uh, command now, while I still have the printf call inside my code, I can see that there are a couple of big functions uh, taking up a lot of space. So at the bottom I can see that the function called SFV uh, write is taking up 800 bytes, which is a lot. Now I already know that this function is part of like the printf uh, implementation, but when running this command it's, it may not always be obvious where a function is coming from. And in that case you can either you can either try to like disassemble your code or you can also just search for the f function name on Google. And then I would quickly realize that that's part of the std io header or code part of the standard library. So with these rules added to my make file I can go ahead and commit this. And then push the commit to GitHub. And open a pull request. Wait for the CI to pass. And then finally merge the pull request. So that's it for this video and I hope you learned something from it. Once again, keeping track of how much memory your code occupies is important when you are programming a microcontroller. With that said, however, one advice that I would like to give uh, when it comes to memory size is to pick a microcontroller that has more memory than you think you are going to need, especially if it's just a hobby project, because then you don't want to spend your time optimizing your code, uh, trying to fit inside a memory that's just too small. To be honest, I made that mistake with this project because this project, or well, like the microcontroller on the on my robot, only has 16 kilobytes of uh, flash memory, and I realized that by the end of this project, I uh, actually filled up the entire memory, and I had to spend some time changing my code to make it fit inside 
inside the memory. And in hindsight, just picking a microcontroller that had like the double amount of space would have saved me hours of work. Of course, you may not always have the luxury to pick a larger memory, especially if you're like working on a high volume product where every single cent counts, because after all, a microcontroller that has more memory is going to cost more. Anyway, see you next time.